Hello and what's good, Nuggets Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Digging Denver Podcast, a podcast for the people by the people. It's been a long time. It's been it's been a few weeks since I was able to drop a podcast. Been a little bit busy. Been a little bit busy with some side projects and some other things going on. But I had to get back to the people. Had to get back, get you guys some uh, some good information, some new podcasts. I've been dying to do a podcast on the Nuggies. It's been killing me not being able to get to you guys. So had to drop something tonight after after an amazing game. Uh, somewhat disappointing, but still a really good game tonight against the Boston Celtics. Had some really great stuff going on with some of the guys there. Uh, Gary Harris had a career night. Have yourself a night, Gary Harris. Uh, Jamal Murray played excellent as well. Mason Plumley, Trey Lyles, uh, a lot of a lot of stuff. Everybody everybody had a great game. So we're gonna hop right into it. Got a lot of things to cover tonight. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time since I've been able to say this, but let's dig in. And we're back, man. It's been a long time. It's been it's been uh, it's only been a few weeks, but still, it feels feels like an eternity that I haven't podcasted. It, it spoke to the good people of Nuggets Nation, Mile High Basketball. The Denver Nuggets fell short tonight, one eighteen to one twenty four against the Boston Celtics in a, an extremely hard fought game. This, arguably in my book, is one of the best games that this Denver Nuggets team has played as an entire team. Uh, for an entire game so far. The bench unit had some woes tonight. Definitely had a little bit of a hard time getting going, getting adjusted to the pressure that is the Boston Celtics, the number one rated defense in the league, uh, holding their opponents to under 100 points. One of the only teams or the only team in the league to actually be able to do that. And they are a nasty, gritty, little... They're much little shits. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Sorry, excuse my language, but good Lord, man. Those guys are grabbing everybody. If you watch the game tonight, you know, uh, Hastings was talking all about it. They are grabbing and shoving and pushing and holding. And it's funny when you start actually paying attention to it and watching the game, you can see in the background every time somebody goes by their man, one of the Boston guys are checking their dude. You know, they're fighting through. Their hands are flailing in the air because they are just a physical, aggressive team. They remind me of, of the little teams we used to play back in the day at the Boys and Girls Club. There no no team there, at least where I'm from. There's a lot of Hispanics, so a bunch of short little cats, but just a bunch of dogs, man. Just just aggressive as all hell, in your face on it, just just making you fight through everything. Just just biting, just biting at your heels the whole time. It's they're just a tough team. Being able to watch them play a whole game tonight was really eye-opening to why they have one of the best ranked defenses in the league. They're they are very physical. They make sure to make it difficult. And if you don't attack that pressure and you fall complacent in outside shots, they're going to give you that all day. And they will still have a hand in your face. They make teams beat themselves with the amount of defensive pressure that they put on them. And, and, and it's hard to, to attack that because it's tiring. Uh, I, was, I was telling my wife after the game, I was like, man, Jamal Murray with like 16 seconds left in the game is is has his hands on his knees and is heaving, trying to get some air back in him. He was... Their play, they played hard to the very end, well-fought game, definitely a fun, entertaining game. I, my heart was pumping the whole time, so uh, some really good things. You know, it, it was a loss for sure in the silver lining, and, and uh, you know, uh, I believe Lombardi said it at the end of the game. The whole good effort type of, uh, it, was a, it was a nice effort. Um, you know, you could take some things away. It doesn't really feel that good, but, but tonight it did because this team, one of the best teams in the East, uh, with the, I believe, second or third best record of the entire league, uh, the, we, we, we played great. We played great against a physical team, even though they're not necessarily physically dominating, except for maybe Baines uh, and Thies. You know, he, both of those guys were, were are, are tough, strong guys down low. But other than that, you know, it's just they're, they're a very physical team. And in the past, the Nuggets have actually backed down from that. Uh, against Detroit as well, as mentioned to Logan, He's definitely it's been a long time since we had Logan on the show, but we were having a conversation the other day and, and I was talking to him about how during the Detroit game, I felt like we were still handling the pressure well. We kept, you know, uh, typically against a, a big guy, bruisers, uh, kind of like Andre Drummond. We tend to back off a little bit and it tends to throw us off, but that's not what happened at all. And in fact, this game started very similar to that last game and how aggressive the Nuggets were. The Nuggets attacked the paint the entire time and they attacked the pressure and that's how you get past it and beat it. The Nuggies were, were shooting well from the field, 11 for 24, 
uh, two pointers and then uh, two for four from the three. The three is definitely something that the Nuggets struggled with a little bit tonight, uh, but they definitely knocked them down as well. For the game, 49% from the field and 32% from the three point line. So definitely wasn't wasn't our hottest three point shooting game, but I really. I really applaud this team and how they continue to attack the paint and attack uh, the physicality of this Boston team, which was really nice. And and in that first, it, I you almost feel like the the tone was set by Trey Lyles when he baptized the rookie Jason Tatum with that posterizing dunk. Welcome to the league, Rook, uh, a Duke former Duke player. So I'm a big Tatum fan, but take that, sir. Even got him with the over the head swing, one handed. That was that was fresh. It was it was a great start, and that's and that's how the rest of the game went on too. It was just super aggressive. Nuggets kept attacking into the paint, uh, just like I was talking about. It was really well. The other thing is that the defense was actually playing pretty well in the first quarter now as a whole there's definitely a lot of lapses Kyrie Irving went off for 33 points tonight uh he averaged 30 points in the last two meetings last year against the Nuggets so that's about on par when he was with Cleveland it's no no surprise that our guards our our backcourt have had some issues this year in their guarding been much better I thought that the Nuggets played the interior paint very well in the first quarter they were getting lots of picks and steals they were uh, causing a lot of problems and Mason Plumlee came out again today extremely well in 31 minutes he racked up 15 points two assists six rebounds which was really nice he shot seven for nine from the field Uh, had a couple blocks that monstrous block against Baines at the end and uh, he showed up against Baines tonight Baines is a very tough uh, a very tough big man in the league and and uh, Mason looked as equally as, as physically strong as he did. Uh, he, he's come out a couple of times now in a couple of games and really, really, really acted as a great facilitator, but at the same time was able to play strong down low and bring that presence that Malone had talked about earlier in the year uh, or when the, first, when the acquisition had kind of first happened about that Mason brings to this team a level of physicality that not a lot of the other players have. Maybe Kenneth Fareed, more more hustle with Kenneth Fareed and, and, um, and physical athletic you know his leaping his his explosiveness but mason brings this toughness this this uh this debo type in the paint physicality that that none of the other nuggets really bring so and he did an excellent job tonight he was setting screens extremely well all game long starting from the beginning to the end and trey lyles showed up and had a fantastic game i i, I thought he played great you know he, he played 33 minutes he only had nine points he had two assists six rebounds uh, shot four for six from the field, ended with a positive eight total overall. But his his play with that dunk in the beginning, his defense was fantastic. He was causing a lot of issues. His length in general, he's in that in that swing position, and I'm glad that he got that start for the game. He he's able to cause a lot of issues with his length and his physical ability. He has he has a good first step. He's quick to the to the hole. He has good footwork and he has some explosiveness. And once again, is not afraid to be aggressive when attacking the rim. He went to go dunk on Baines hard, and that was nice to see as well. He was on a mission tonight to show that he's he's a player in this league, and, and I think that he deserves this start. I really like seeing him with this unit. Uh, he showed that even though Kenneth Fareed had a couple of good games, that he was able to come in and contribute to what this first unit was able to do uh, against Boston. Malik also came in strong. Uh, had some really good defensive plays as well. He is continuing to look more and more like a defensive juggernaut. His ability to keep his man in front of him is by far the best on the Nuggets team. Now, I don't want to hop on the Malik train and and blow it out of proportion, uh, but truly, his footwork one-on-one against the defender and the ability to, even when the defender is making multiple moves, changing directions, changing hands, and really still attacking Malik, takes the chest, moves his feet well, and still gets stops on the ball. There's another time where it was on a swing over to Jason Tatum. Somebody flew by him. Jason went driving to the paint, and when Malik went ahead and slid on over, he went straight up and contested Jason, met him in the air going straight up and down. He didn't get the foul call on him and caused Jason to get the the turnover. And so that was really nice as well to see fundamental defense, somebody on this team who really understands that. And as this kid continues to get more and more minutes and more and more time to get used to playing on the floor like this, his, his upside as, especially as a, as a defender, as a positive defender is, is looking very good. His offensive side as well, his springs, his quickness, his shot, his skill set that he has to this game is going to be lethal. If he can establish himself as a very good two-way player for this team he has a role on this team 
that I think is going to be very versatile in the these in these upcoming seasons for sure. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of people were out for Barton the other night. He had that 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 rough, you know, end of the quarter turned into Barton ball one on one shake and bake. And not that <laughs> in no way, guys, in no way am I saying that we should trade Barton right now. However, what I will say is that if that was to happen and we were to a, we were able to acquire somebody that was beneficial to this team, I truly feel, feel like Malik Beasley, while not able to bring what Barton can scoring, can still contribute a good amount to this team uh, as the backup and still contribute to this team because of his defensive upside. And then as he continues to get in the scheme of things and play more minutes, I mean, he's already passed – how much how much time he's played last year this year already this this far into the season so far so as he continues and you've seen his growth so as he continues to get these minutes they're going to continue to be exponential to this young kid in his development and and it's and it's really nice to see uh very impressed with Malik's defense tonight had had some really good plays which is really nice uh, Kenneth Farid was gobbling up the boards on the glass down low. In 16 minutes, he only had one point, uh, but he had four assists and 10 rebounds. He had a, a rough night shooting from the field, 0 for 6, uh, but he had a couple blocks as well. He he ended with a with a net negative and an, uh, a negative nine, but I, I really feel like the way that he impacted and brought the energy and was able to still contribute, even though he wasn't able to put them back in like he typically does, uh, was still phenomenal, still gave a lot of energy to that second unit um, that that second unit wasn't having. They struggled uh, a lot, especially in that second quarter, they struggled a lot with handling the pressure, the physicality of Boston's defense. Uh, you could tell, or it felt to me that they didn't look very comfortable at all during that time. And there was a, a minute when they went on a, on a run, Boston went on a run where the Nuggets just looked out of sorts. They were looking for, and I believe Hastings called it out. Hastings said, you know, they're looking for a score. Moody had a couple nice drives, but wasn't able to finish. Uh, you know, had a couple turnovers there. So it was a really rough start for them. And during that time, Kenneth, I felt if if out of, out of everybody brought that type of energy to at least help them in there. I mean, both teams did a great job, and especially in the first, you know, they came out uh, defensively were tough. They had a, a really, really nice showing. Everyone was taking care of the ball. It was clean basketball. It was tight basketball. There's only three turnovers in that first quarter, which was really nice. Nuggets were shooting 13 for 27 from the field. Uh, they had 15 rebounds to Boston's eight. 10 assists as well, which was really nice, and 18 points in the paint, which they ended up pulling away on the on the uh, Celtics with tonight. And that was that was where, where the points in the paint is really where they were able to establish and make it a close game. That is how you beat a defensive team like Boston. You're going to have to go straight at them. The only way you can get past pressure like that is not by conceding into it, but instead of attacking it and forcing the issue. Because every time any one of the players went in, I mean – there was hands everywhere. There was body checks everywhere. There was multiple no calls that even Kyrie Irving, especially the all-star, of course he's not going to get the call or get the call against him, but there was a lot of times where there was tons of tons of contact during takes on the inside that they had no calls on. Uh, but that's, that's just how it's going to be. And, and on those nights, you're going to have to play hard and play through it. So uh, they did a fantastic job of, of that as well. In that second, uh, you know, one thing that I really took away from it that I like to see, and that's been it's been a a steady uh, a steady showing in the last um, last few games is is Chandler and him being aggressive. He's been in a slump this year as far as especially scoring. I don't think he's going to be able to make it back like he was scoring at the beginning of last year. However, when you're in these slumps. One thing that he can do and that he has been doing, and that especially that I saw tonight, was that he was being aggressive. And when you can't score and when you can't get things going, you need to take it into paint, at least cause, you know, press the issue, uh, cause and draw some fouls. That way you can get to the free throw line. And he did a fantastic job of that as well. And then, like I said, just that second unit, there's multiple times where the second unit, you know, it's it, like I said, it's hard to place blame, but the, the second unit really struggled against this team. They, they were, they were ice cold. Uh, there was some turnover, some sloppy play and, and, that's when Boston found the most its most success, was especially when that second unit had came in. And then Shane Larkin comes out of left field and just slices up the Nuggets, has it himself a night. In 17 minutes, he racked up 14 points, two assists, three rebounds, shot six for six for the field, just ridiculously efficient. Had a block, a steal. I mean, he was all over the place. He, all over the place. He ended with a net positive of 14. So uh, Shane Larkin really went in there, caused a lot of issues, and was able to ignite the Boston team when Irving was out. That caused a lot of stress for us too. When 
even even Larkin's scoring ability, and he had some really good shots, and he he made some really good plays. Our point guards are really going to have to learn to be able to cause that pressure, especially on the second unit point guard. When he comes in, put the pressure on him, get steals from him, get stops from him, and really turn the tide then because – the the two the two point guards that we have arguably with three you know you have you could throw Malik or Ill Will in there as as kind of the rotating uh, point guards when you have those we're gonna have to exploit that and, and and that's what you could say for the whole second unit the 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 kill the kill button for the Nuggets or or, or their their secret weapon is depth and so far this year when the second unit goes in and just like I was alluding to a little bit earlier the Nuggets have had those struggles really starting to get that second unit going. Now, you could take a look at tonight and see that Jokic is out, uh, that Millsap is out, and Barton is out. And with all those three guys out still, we're still able to throw in a second unit that's able to strengthen together. That's not the second unit that starts all the time. So even though I'm saying the second unit and the depth hasn't been as great, the depth is also what's keeping us in these games. However, it's just that second unit when they come, they really got to turn things around. Like they did with the Indiana game, and I thought it was really cool if you guys had paid attention. You could see in the corner after the game had started, it looked or appeared to be Richard Jefferson kind of pulled the guys in a huddle and, and talked to him. And at that time, in my head, what goes through my head, obviously, I, I don't have any any clear idea. Uh, but what goes through my head is that he really was able to talk to that second unit and say, look, guys, we've had some trouble, some woes. You guys need to come out strong. The second unit needs to come and contribute. The starters can't just be the guys doing it. And they came out pretty strong in that performance uh, right out the gate, even though you know we lost and Oladipo went off for his 44 points. Uh, the energy from that second unit in that game, in the, in the first especially, is what I'm really referring to, um, it seemed different. And, and that's what needs to happen if this team plays like that tonight, if the second union could come out and contribute in some type of way, this game turns into an even closer game and possibly a win. Uh, so just something the Nuggets need to work on. Boston's a heck of a team. Uh, you know, I give them all props. They were absolutely red hot in the second quarter. And, and, and that whole first half, they, they shot 61% in the first half. In the second quarter, they were shooting 50% from the three. They're only like a 30% three-point shooting team. And so there's going to have those nights where, you know, a team gets hot. But at the same time, the Nuggets, I felt, in the defensive end, in that second quarter especially, started to slip a little bit. And in the second unit, Bain, Brown, and Tatum all combined for like 33 points, 13 for 15 for shooting from the field. So just a a very, very efficient night. Like I said, Larkin went six for six from the field. Uh, Just a very efficient game, especially on the offensive end from the Boston Celtics. Combine that with a heck of a defense, and you're gonna you're gonna have the second, third best uh, record in the league. So not surprising there to see. Uh, some of the things that they were able to stream together. The Boston Celtics actually took advantage too and beat the Nuggets in their own game. They had 13 fast break, fast break points to Nuggets too. So they were able to really get out in transition. And I believe uh, it was uh, Ryan as well, assistant coach, he came out and was talking about how we just gave them way too many points in the transition. They were able to really exploit the Nuggets in transition defense and and and, and open up a lot of, of problems there. Uh, like I said, and Larkin was just slashing us every time something every time something good would happen. Larkin came in and threw a dagger down, and that's exactly how the whole that whole uh, quarter felt in general. Nuggets would come with some really good plays, uh, and then you know Boston would come back with some daggers and and really just just keep that ten point lead. The Nuggets could never really close that gap until until the third, uh, and and in that third when when the third had started. Uh, the Nuggets, once again, after after that little break, you could tell the Nuggets were moving side to side. They were moving east to west, not north to south. So they weren't attacking the paint. They were moving the ball a ton on the outside. You know, there'd be a little bit of cuts in, in, the, in the high post extended, maybe get the ball there, but it'd get kicked right back out to the three. There was, there was lack of drives. And there was only within the first couple of minutes. After a while, they got rolling again. Uh, we started to resemble the first quarter, taking contact, finishing strong at the rim again. So the, t- the tide really changed. You know, they would it would take a couple seconds for them to kind of get used to that physicality as soon as they did. And, and you know, a couple guys, somebody would get going, Gary would get going and, and, and have a nice finish or Jamal would, would have a nice finish uh, or a great shot. And that would really ignited them and got them going again and got that offense going to what we call what I call, you know, Nuggets ball. That's that's the type of basketball that this type of team that this team needs to play if they want to be successful and make the playoffs this year in the third uh, when when the Nuggets started to come back, they went on that 9-0 run. 
Uh, Jamal came being aggressive. Wilson kept attacking the basket and Lyles with some nice defensive plays uh, before the game had actually started. You know, I, I, I had tweeted out that Boston is actually first in the league for second chance points allowed uh, to the opposing teams. And on top of that, the Nuggets actually on the road game ranked first in offensive rebounds. Uh, and so to take advantage of those second chance points was going to be huge in that third Denver had 13 offensive rebounds to Boston's two. And that's where we started to really come back and really make that gain. And when you're playing such a good, such a good defensive team, those second chance points, if they're going to allow that, you have got to capitalize. You have got to convert and make sure that you're making every one of those count. And they did. They, they cut it down really close. They actually got the lead at one point. Uh, and so that was really great to see. They, they kept that fight, that spirit. They never once backed down from anything. And especially Jamal. I really feel like he is starting to show some mental strength or, or it's getting stronger. Uh, I'm not saying, oh, he's, he's starting to put it together and he's, he's, you know, he's going to be the point guard of the league. Uh, although he's, he's, uh, you know, that's not too far off either. Um, but his mental strength looks like it's coming around and, and it's been well-documented and reported that he's a very confident kid. He's very, confident in his mental fortitude. He played with those double, double sport, sports hernia last year. So what I'm talking about is more in-game play as a point guard, as a facilitator for this team, knowing when to attack, when he needs to take over, when he needs to be aggressive. That's the type of mental mental um, fortitude that I see starting to come. It's, it's on the on-court play. He's always had the, the toughness of being aggressive and confident, but really starting to understand how to play the position in the game uh, Hastings and, and Hanslick were making comments about how every single time out Harris and, and Murray are over there talking to coach. They're over there getting coached. They're asking questions. They're, they're, uh, they're communicating with one another and they're really, really trying to get better. And after that, uh, Murray comes back, comes up to Lyles, tells him something, re- relays something, whatever the, the message was, you know, I was like, all right, cool. I got it. And they come back and, you know, they, they, just seeing that communication, seeing that ability to talk and relay that confidently and your teammates respect that. If you guys recall during the uh, Will Barton's, you know, career night, when he was barking at the end, his little comment of give me the ball and get out of the way when he was barking at people at the end, I believe he was really saying that because there wasn't nobody looking at him. Everyone was just staring straight. Nobody was responding to him. He's like, yeah, all right, yeah, you know, good day here, here, this, this, that. And nobody, wasn't nobody going to give him any attention. Uh, and so that's a, that's a difference. You know what I mean? Trey Lyle was like, all right, cool, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you could tell it resonated with him. Uh, as playing body language doctor, but but it's true. You could see that, and you could extrapolate that from from the way that he took it, and and I thought that was cool. Uh, he had himself a heck of a game, you know. Him and and Gary went off tonight and had combined for sixty four points, especially in in the fourth. Jamal was not backing down from Kyrie Irving. In fact, he had that really nice stop on him. Went down to the opposite end, got fouled about seventeen times before he finally got to the bucket. Finished strong, uh, missed the the missed the the bucket, but you know got his his call. So he went to the free throw line, hit those, and then came down and hit a couple of really big threes to to make it a close game. And I uh, like I said at the beginning of this podcast, like Jamal was over there with 16 seconds left, heaving, trying to get some air back in him because he was not stopping. And it was really nice to see him just attack Kyrie Irving. We obviously know he's not scared of anybody. He has a ridiculous amount of confidence in himself and in this team, and that's. That's great. That's what we need to see from the future leader of this team as he looks to be molding himself into uh, extremely well. But, you know, if there's a performance of the night, it's obviously Gary Harris. He had himself a career night tonight, 36 points. Like I was talking about, 11 of those 36 came in the third. He had some really strong hustle plays, a lot of us, a few assists during that time, had that crazy nice dunk, and he got saucy on Brown. I was watching the replay on it, and you could see the the Boston bench kind of starting to get a little hyped that that Brown was kind of chesting, uh, chesting uh, 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 Harris up, and Harris is, hits him with that nasty hesitation, you know, with his back turned to him. Back turned towards him. Brown stutters and just gets left staying still. He turns around, does the Euro step baseline, cuts back into the inside, finishes behind. The, dang, I don't know what Gary was doing, but that was saucy, friend. That was saucy. The the whole bench, I was like, man, you guys look like a bunch of fools. Just Gary just, just riddling on him like that. So that was... That was fresh. I, I don't know what's going on with Gary. He hit that ridiculous uh, last-second shot from the tip with uh, when Rozier and, 
and uh, Farid got into it. He tipped it over to him, never brought it back. You know, it it, it looked kind of like a uh, a yoke hit shot from the inside when he kind of does those uh, pass inside, catches it, never fully comes down and just kind of pops it back up, but all the way from the three point line. And he he never stopped either. You know, when when anytime somebody um anytime the team would find, you know, themselves slipping as far as not being able to get the ball moving as well, there's one guy attacking. And that was Jamal, predominantly Jamal, uh, Gary Harris, and Wilson Chandler. But in that in the fourth at the very end, Gary Harris was really pressing the issue, getting inside, like I said, had those nice dunks, uh, had some nice shots as well. So it, it was just a fantastic game all the way around. I'm actually I'm actually very very impressed with how excited I am about this game because of how good of a showing it was and how hard these dudes play. This is a very young team, and these were a bunch of grown men playing on that court tonight. Tonight was the first time in my eyes that I've seen all of these young cats play like a bunch of grown men. They all look like they've been in the league for years already, ready to handle the pressure, and I'm excited. They are going to be dead exhausted on the trip back, but they're coming back home Everybody make sure to go get out there and go support them. I'm going to be loud as heck being out there. I haven't seen the Nuggies play at home for a while, so I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. Got some really good games coming up and some really, some, really big things, some really big things in the pipeline. As it stands right now, Denver is second in the Northwest Division uh, with a pretty good record when you consider how, how hurt we've been with this team and especially our two main players, not even just our role players. It's two of our arguably uh, best players. Uh, they, they've been fantastic. We're fifth right now in the Western Conference, the hardest conference in the league. Uh, 15 wins, 13 losses. So it, it, all in all, this team is playing fantastic. I'm glad... You know, if you're finding a silver lining in in this injury, I can't say that I'm glad for the injury. But one thing I am glad to see is that the people like Trey Lyles, Trey Lyles is getting his shot, making great use of it, showing that he has a very good role on this team and that he could be very useful in certain situations going down the stretch, especially when you go into the playoffs and things are getting deep. Knowing what these guys can do and having them know how to gel with this team and play with this team is super big. So... The fact that this injury happened now and that we're still playing in a pretty decent ball. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know if you guys remember me, but a few podcasts ago, uh, I had mentioned, I said, you know, don't get too high and don't get too low. This team is a solid team. There's going to be the rough moments where they lose like, like to Indiana or when they lose to, to silly teams that they shouldn't. But overall, this team has mad potential and they're showing that they're ready and willing to play. We have uh, the Pelicans coming home on Friday. Uh, next week we'll go against OKC, even though they had their struggles, that's a solid team, Minnesota on the 20th, Portland on uh, the 22nd of Friday, 23rd is Golden State, uh, Utah, who's beat us twice now on the 26th, Minnesota again on the 27th, just a grueling schedule, just an absolute grueling schedule. And out of those games that I just listed, we only have three games at home, the Pelicans, uh, Minnesota and Utah. So it's, it's going to be a battle. This, this, if you remember at the beginning of the year, Mason Plumley Mason Plumley had released something about you don't know who you are as a team until things get tough. Well, guess what? They're without their two best players. Nikola Jokic should be coming back within the next couple games. I would say the latest, uh, and things are about to get tough. This team is about to find out if if they can come together and string some wins, a few nice wins together as a team. It's going to build this team's momentum even more. These last two games have been momentum builders as it is. Even though Detroit isn't a great team, there are some really nice things shown. The fact that they were able to take that and continue it in tonight's game against a fantastic Eastern Conference team in the Boston Celtics, Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum, Baines, all those cats. That was really nice to see. This team has a ton, of, a ton of potential and upside. Keep your spirits high and the head up held high. Make sure to go follow uh, Digging Denver on Twitter. Make sure to go follow us on Instagram. Like I said, took a little break. It's been a little while since I left you something dope to step to. I'm back again. We're going to be putting these back out here again. If you have some questions, hit me up. We're going to do the fan mail bags. We're going to get back into it, guys. So uh, let's go, Denver Nuggets. Make sure to go down and support the fellas when you can here at home. We'll be doing some more giveaways as we can. And, uh, yeah, let me know. You know, I, I look forward to doing this. Just want to make it a quick one today. You know, how to, how to get going and stuff. But want to make it a quick one today. 
and uh, just get back to the people. It's been a while since I got to talk to you guys, talk about the Nuggies, uh, get some of my excitement out about this team. So, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys giving me your time. Make sure to go leave a rating and review on iTunes. Make sure, like I said, go check out our, our stuff on digindenver.com. It was great talking to you guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. Let's dig in. Let's dig in.